swimming to extinction. That's the focus of tonight's angle. I think the guidelines they set forward are very good and do a very good job of promoting inclusivity while keeping um, competitional integrity um, going. Whatever competitional integrity transgender UPenn swimmer Leah Thomas professed to believe in was shattered last night at the Ivy League Championship. Thomas heads in for the final turn. It's going to be a race for second place. It might be Penn going 1-2 with Baroker making the turn currently in second place. And over the last half of the pool, nobody will touch Leah Thomas, who will finish at 437-32. Leah Thomas, Ivy League champion in the 500 free. Now, Thomas not only won that 500-yard freestyle race by a stunning margin, it was about a half a length of the pool, um, Thomas also established a new record for Harvard University's pool. Now, even the announcers kind of tacitly admitted that it wasn't Thomas's intense training or dedication to the craft that was necessarily responsible for the victory, but something else. You can see the stroke, the powerful stroke of Leah Thomas, where there isn't a whole lot of movement in her leg. She's using a lot of upper body to reach and, and pull, and it's a, a much quieter stroke, even as it's more powerful than a lot of these other swimmers right now. Well, I mean, he, he, he can't say what he's probably thinking, but anyone who knows even the basics of competitive swimming realizes that deriving power from only the arms isn't natural. Now, this is 2022, so of course Thomas wasn't the only first who made it to the top of the podium. Yale's Isaac Hennig, a transgender man who has not even yet begun hormone therapy, so remains eligible to swim on the women's team, set a new pool record in the 50-yard freestyle. So what's wrong here? Are we a civilization as Americans really okay with what we're witnessing? Is everyone afraid to speak out? Listen to the heartbreak in the words of Thomas's teammates. One anonymous Penn swimmer back in December described her teammates to OutKick as upset and crying, feeling, quote, so discouraged because no matter how much work they put in, they're going to lose. A month later, another told Fox News that the NCAA they doesn't actually care about women at all. Well, I hate to say this, but she's right. Last month, the NCAA took the coward's route, saying it would defer to the rules of each sport and their governing body to determine the eligibility of trans athletes. Now, when USA Swimming released an update to its policies a couple of weeks back, requiring these transgender women to have half the previous level of testosterone, Thomas was allowed to compete under originally, well, the NCAA stepped in, citing potentially detrimental impacts to schools and student athletes. What? And last week, the NCAA said it wouldn't alter the previously approved higher testosterone threshold for transgender women to compete, clearing the way for Thomas to be in the pool this week and next month. Now, these fellow swimmers know this entire exercise is a charade. So why won't they stand up and refuse to participate? Well, I'll tell you why. They're intimidated because the entirety of society is weighing against them. The coaches are cowards, and one swimmer from Penn said pretty much everyone individually has spoken to our coaches about not liking this. Our coach, Mike Schnur, just really likes winning, though. Hmm. The media then, of course, cheerleads the perversion of sex roles. Azine Gorashi, an actual reporter for The New York Times, wrote, Leah Thomas is just the latest elite athlete in the last century who has been subject to anatomical chromosomal or hormonal scrutiny to compete in women's events. One thing they all have in common, they were winning. Of course, they pushed the propaganda. So what is your message then to these state officials, to, to these parents who are concerned that cisgendered athletes will be edged up by trans athletes? Yeah, there is, there's, no, uh, there's no reason to believe that. There's been no proof. Trans people have not ever dominated in sports. We are participating with our peers. Love the stash. 
Um, I'll tell that to the girls in the pool last night. And finally, the most powerful liberals in America, they encourage it. This administration have guidance for schools on dealing with disputes arising over trans girls competing against and with cis girls. I would just say that the president's belief is that uh, trans rights are human rights, and that's why he signed that executive order. Believe schools should offer the opportunity for students to engage in extracurricular activities, even if they're transgender. I think that's their right. But what about the rights of the girls, the young women who've trained for years, sometimes decades, in pursuit of their greatness, pursuit of pool records? Well, too bad, according to the White House and pretty much all the culture. Just like everything else in the past two years, it's left to GOP governors to stand for principles. Now, several states have already passed laws protecting girls' sports by keeping transgender girls, college-age women, from playing in school sports leagues matching their gender identity. They include Florida, Texas, Mississippi, and South Dakota, among others. Now, that's interesting. Where have we seen those states leading the way before? Remember COVID? But it takes more than just state action. That can always be challenged in court. You can find a judge to overturn pretty much anything these days. And as we've seen from Virginia, though, to California, and everywhere in between, when concerned citizens get together unafraid and push back with logic and common sense, basic biology. Parents and neighbors say this just isn't what we want for our future, our kids' futures. You, know, you can all make a difference. The issue of what's going on in the pools, track and field, girls' sports, women's sports, college athletics, deserves the same passion. And that's the angle.